Hello everybody, welcome to our online worship video. We're glad you're with us here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. Today we're gathering around the Word of God to celebrate God's goodness and grace to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. We learned in the book of Hebrews that when we gather for worship, we come near to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to the city of the living God that we come near to thousands and thousands of angels in joyful assembly, that when we worship, we are the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven, that we come near to God, the judge of all men, that in worship, we join with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. We come near to Jesus, the mediator of the New Testament, and we hear the uh, blood of Jesus that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. We're glad you're with us today as we um, worship, as we gather around the word, as we hear words of grace and mercy in the Lord Jesus. Today we're going to be taking a look at Hebrews chapter 13. If you have your Bibles, please open to there. We're going to be taking a look at a couple of verses today, and we're going to see that God has made us holy in Christ, and because we are holy set apart as God's people, it changes how we live and that we now live holy lives or sanctified lives. We're glad you're with us. Stay um, with us after the worship service. I have several announcements I want to bring you up to speed on. God's blessings and your worship. We'll see you in there. Hello everyone. Welcome to our online worship service today. We begin our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment to silently reflect on our sinfulness and our need for a Savior. We confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that may we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name amen almighty god in his mercy has given his only son jesus christ to die for you and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of christ and by his authority i therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today is from Psalm 36. Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes that his iniquity cannot be found out and hated. The words of his mouth are trouble and deceit, he has ceased to act wisely and do good. He plots trouble while on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not reject evil. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast, you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, 
and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of the arrogance come upon me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the evildoers lie fallen. They are thrust down, unable to rise. Our second scripture reading for today is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, the first 18 verses. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. Our gospel lesson for today is from Matthew chapter 5, beginning at the 13th verse. Jesus is speaking. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are a light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This is the word of our God. We now join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, if you have your Bibles, please open them to Hebrews chapter 13. We want to spend some time in Hebrews 13 today as it teaches us about sanctification, about our holy life in Christ. In the book of Hebrews, our Christian faith and life Our sanctification is described in priestly terms. Early in the book, Jesus calls you his brothers in the priesthood. You share in his heavenly calling as a priest. We learn that you are made holy in Christ and that you are sanctified and set apart for priestly service. Your entire life is pictured as a liturgical worship service to the Lord. Isn't that fascinating? Your life is like a liturgical worship service. The things that you do as a Christian is priestly service to God. Let me show you how Hebrews 13 teaches that to us. Take a look at verses 15 and 16 in Hebrews 13. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Notice that your work is described as a sacrifice. That's what an Old Testament priest does. Your Christian life is viewed as priestly service to the Lord. That means what you do and what you say is important. It is holy to the Lord. Your life is not only described as as a sacrifice, But your life and what you say and what you do is a reflection of God to the people in your life. You represent the Lord to the people in your life. Your Christian life is viewed as a priestly service to God. And that priestly service begins when you thank and praise God for his grace and mercy in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Hebrews, we learn that God our Father provided a righteous and eternal high priest for us. Jesus, who has made atonement for all of our sins by his once and for all sacrifice, with his own blood shed on the cross, he has made atonement for you. Your sins are covered over. They are paid for. You are forgiven. Remember the promise. Because of Jesus, God will never, ever remember your sins again. You have a clear and a clean conscience. You have a perfectly restored relationship with the Father in heaven because of his Son, Jesus the Christ. You have been given the gift of eternal life, and you have been set apart. You have been made holy. You are now to live a godly life here on earth. God chose you to be his very own through his son, Jesus Christ. And as a holy priesthood, All of us together as a congregation, as the people of God, we thank and praise God for his wonderful grace and mercy to us. We do that when we gather in public worship to confess his name, to hear his word, to sing his praises. Even now, through this video worship service, we are thanking and praising God for his greatness and his goodness that we see in the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's also seen in your own life. 
as an individual. Part of your priestly work is to thank and praise God for what he has done and for what he is doing in your life, even right now. You are to continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. By your words and by your good works, you offer God a sacrifice of praise. You are a priest in God's eyes. Your priestly service begins as you thank and praise God for who he is and what he has done for us as we see it in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Son of God, our great high priest. Your priestly service then turns to your neighbor. Take another look at Hebrews 13. This time look at verses 15 and 16. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. In response to what God has done for you in the Lord Jesus Christ, you then do good and share with others. In theology, this is called gospel motivation. The gospel good news about Jesus and his salvation then motivates you to live a holy and a godly life. Remember that the order of things is crucial. God acts first through his son, Jesus Christ, to save us, to rescue us from our sin. And then we respond with our good works. The order is important. God first, then you. Be sure never to turn that around because you will fall into all kinds of false teaching. Your good works are a response to what God has already done for you through his son, Jesus Christ. Your good works never earn your forgiveness or your salvation. And now as a holy priest who knows the Lord Jesus Christ and his goodness and grace and salvation, you have been set apart, sanctified by the Lord Jesus, motivated by the gospel good news, filled with the Holy Spirit to live your life carefully doing good works. That's who we are now and what we do as God's people. And in the book of Hebrews, examples of good works abound. For instance, we learn that we are to care about other Christians, especially those that you worship with. You are to consider them a part of your family and to look out for their well-being and to be concerned about their needs and to do what you can to help. We care about other believers, especially those in our congregation. In addition, we learn that hospitality marks Christians, that we are to love all people, that our love and our care extends even beyond our own congregation, even to people that we do not know. We love others because Christ has first loved us. We learn that the Ten Commandments guide our lives as we live as Christians. The Ten Commandments are not only God's will for you, but they define what it means to love God and to love one another. They teach us what is right and what is wrong. They teach us what is good and what is evil. The Ten Commandments guide our holy lives as the people of God. In Hebrews, we learn that we are to pay a special attention 
to honoring marriage as one biological man and one biological woman in a lifelong commitment. Marriage is both an institution from God and a blessing from his good hand. Marriage is where God builds the family, a husband and a wife raising godly children. Hebrews teaches us that any form of sexual immorality dishonors marriage and will be judged by God. As God's people, we believe publicly, we publicly believe, teach, and confess God's good gift of biblical marriage and godly family. We learn in Hebrews that since we are holy priests, sanctified and set apart, that we live with contentment, that we thank God for what he has given to us. We trust him to provide for our daily bread. Contentment marks our lives as God's people. Not envy or bitterness or jealousy. We are content in our Father's care. We learn that we are to thank God for those who have brought the word of God to us. We all have teachers and pastors and parents and friends who told us about Jesus. And so we thank God for them. We pray for them and we imitate their faith. In fact, a good spiritual discipline would be take a minute or two to think through who the key people are in your life. Who did the Lord use to bring that gospel good news about Jesus to you? In Hebrews, we learn that we are to respect authority, knowing that the authorities in our life have been placed over us by God's providence. We submit to lawful authority and we obey the laws of the land. Hebrews teaches us that we are to endure hardship as discipline, that people notice when you handle your problems and pain and suffering with complete trust in God the Father's care for you. Because you know your Father in, in heaven, you know his love and his care, that you can trust him in difficult times. You can patiently endure. We endure our hardship as discipline, knowing that our loving Heavenly Father is with us and that he is at work. The book of Hebrews would teach us to be biblically literate and doctrinally sound. It warns us not to be carried away by strange and diverse teachings. Of course, the entire New Testament warns us that false doctrines and false teachings are very serious. You can be deceived and you can lose your salvation. False doctrine is a great danger. And the only way to combat false teaching and false doctrine is to be biblically literate and doctrinally sound. And the only way that happens is through Holy Scripture, by the careful study of the Word of God. We learn in the book of Hebrews that as God's sanctified and holy people who live our lives as holy priests, that we are to share with others. Generosity marks God's people because God has been generous to us. It never hurts to be generous to others. As a congregation, our tithes and our offerings are used to share the gospel and to help people in many and various ways. As an individual, your time and skills and money and resources, your know-how can be used and shared with other people. As a holy priest of the one true and only God, we are not self-centered and we are not selfish people. We have learned from Christ to be generous and giving people 
who share with others, especially those who are in need. These are just some of the ways that the book of Hebrews teaches you about your holy life as a priest of the Lord Jesus, as you've been set apart to do good works, to do good and share with others, as the book of Hebrews says. One of the things that we learn is that as a holy priest, you do not sit on the sideline. There's no place for that. There's no time for that. A holy priest of God is busy and active, carefully doing good works, glorifying God, and serving other people. Your life is not only offered to God as a living sacrifice, but your life and what you say and what you do is a reflection of Christ to the people in your life. In other words, you represent Jesus to the to your family and to your friends and to your neighbors. Jesus described it as as being a light that shines. He said that you are the salt of the earth. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. People learn about Christ from you, from your words, from your actions. Remember, you are some of the precious few who boldly and unashamedly confess Christ to the world and live by his teachings. Don't underestimate the power of your words or your actions. They are salt and they are light. Live your life as a holy priest every single day. Through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, you have been sanctified and set apart. You live differently than the people in the world. Your everyday Christian faith and life is described as priestly service to the one true and only God. May you live as a holy priest every day. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, our great high priest, we thank you for the vocation that you have given to us as holy priests. Help us to serve you and love others so that we can be faithful in our service and effective in our witness. Help us to offer a sacrifice of praise to our Father in heaven and to do good and to share with our neighbor. We pray this knowing that you will help us to do these things. And now we join in the prayer that you have given us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God's blessings to you. Go out and live as a priest of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will see you next week for worship. Bye now. Wow, isn't that fascinating what Hebrews teaches us? That our lives are described in terms of priestly terms. Sanctification, our holy living, is a service to God that we, um, that we give to other people as we live each day. May you live as a holy priest in your life. A couple of things to bring you up to speed with here at Trinity. This week now begins all of our Bible studies. All of our teachers are eager and excited to get um, studying and to um, 
and to be in our classes. You, of course, are welcome and invited to all of our classes. We want to grow as um, biblically literate, doctrinally sound disciples, and the only way that happens is through the Word of God. And so I hope that you will join us in a Bible study. Um, my Bible study classes, the notes will be online if you'd like to study on your own. Um, just go to our website and you can download those. If you have trouble with that, give me a call and I can send them to you as well. Um, but we hope that you are studying God's Holy Word as, as a congregation. That's one of our main emphasis is to be biblically literate and doctrinally sound. A second thing to... Um, to note is that we are looking for um, a position, a, a staff position, someone to take the lead on our worship technology, to to prepare the slides that are on the screens from from beginning to end, from the creation of the slides, which we have a database for, to um, uh, the, the presentation. If that's something that interests you, it's about a 10-hour um, a week position. Come and talk to me, and I can certainly um, bring you up to speed and and tell you what the job entails. Uh, we're glad you're with us. If you um, want to see other things that are going on in our congregation, check your email, um, check our website, and um, you are welcome and invited to everything that happens here at Trinity. We're glad you're with us. God's blessings in your week, and we will see you next week in worship.